today we are going through the Gary Brecker methylation report. I'm not a specialist, I'm just reading my report and from the information I have been told and researched myself. What is methylation? You have oil from the floor, you have a car. You cannot put that oil into the car. You've got to do a conversion in order to put that as petrol or gasoline to get it in the car. That's the same with your body. You take a supplement. Your genes convert that supplement into a bioavailable supplement or form that can then be used within your body for function. Methylation is the key to having good optimal health. Not many people know about this one. That is the reason I got this report because I want to know what my body is doing. I only need to get it once in my life. I don't need to get it more. It's not like bloods. You either have the genes or you don't. This is my full cycle. So each bit will affect the other cycle. If there is a missing part in the circuit, what happens? The light don't shine. That means the same with your body. It's not going to be as most optimized as it can be. We'll go on to the next one just to show you. So we've got, first off, we have green. You can see here, there's green, there's red, and there's amber. Green is sweet, it's all good. Amber, is it somewhat effective? Red, it's negative. It's not doing anything. Now, these bits here, the purple bits, these are elements that are going to help the cycle. For example, the methionine cycle, the methionine bit here, to the SAMe, magnesium, potassium and ATP are great for that. SAH is not. So when you see the elements in orange, they're bad. The ones in purple, yes, they are good for you. So we'll start from the beginning. The folate cycle. The only one that is a problem on mine here is the DHFR gene. That is amber and it's upregulated. You can see this arrow here. It's mean it's up. For me, it's working too hard. Too much folic acid within my diet and that is down to non-organic fruit and veg, wheat products and grains. They spray your non-organic fruit and veg with this folic acid to protect you. But what it does, my body can't use that very well. I'm having way too much and it's having a side effect to make me tired and fatigue. I need to get rid of that in my diet. For me, organic fruit and veg now from now on. Don't want that non-organic fruit because I do not want those pesticides from that folic acid as it is not good for my body. Everything else in that cycle is sweet. See, I've got greens, greens, greens. Everything is good from there. I can convert folate very well, so greens are very good for me. Green vegetables, and that will help with my folate cycle. Next one, the methionine cycle. I've got a little bit more problems with this one. First off, you can see here, we've got the PEMPT, we've got the CHDH, and we've got the BHMT, and we've got the FUT2. They're my problems with this cycle. So let's start with the PEMPT and the CHDH. Here, I've got a red, I'm two down-regulated. I've got an amber, I'm one down-regulated. This is because there's two sort of PEMPTs. They've put it like this to summarize. CHDH, red, two down regulated. And then BHMT, red, two down regulated. Amber, one down regulated. So the PEMT and the CHDH, that means for me I have a reduced choline synthesis. Choline is found in egg yolks and it impacts my betaine. So as that PQQ is very good for this system. So something that I can be doing is having a kiwi a day because that is good for this. Betaine levels are low. That means because of this, I can take something called NMN. NMN, it's hard to say that, and betaine, trimesoglycate, which is TMG, equals more NAD in the mitochondria. Mitochondria are the battery of your cells, so this is going to help with my fatigue, it's gonna make me more energetic. TMG helps the NMN create more NAD. If I just had NMN, it wouldn't create as much NAD from there, so the TMG just helps do that. Adequate choline for that 
bit of the cycle. Lots of eggs, egg yolks. There's 115 mg choline on each yolk on average. So I want to be having at least 500 a day. So I'm going to be having at least, it is a little bit more, at least five eggs a day. I'm having six a day now, three in the morning, three in lunch or dinner. The FUT, that is an inability to convert my B12. So I've got to take a methylated form of B12. MTRR, I didn't see that one actually. That is an amber one there, as you can see, one down regulated. What this is, it is the MTR conversion of homocysteine. This just links, it is a reduced ability to methylate B12. So same thing applies, I've got to take a methylated form of B12. Let's go on to the next cycle. So now, the CBS, you can see, that is red. That is red and it's upregulated. So I do not want to be having lead. B6 is good and so is this. But this is because if I'm having a carnivore diet, I've got a lot of homocysteine. This could lead to ammonia if I do not eat enough green vegetables. So it, since it's upregulated, I need to be making sure I'm having my green veg. At the current time, I was probably not having enough. So I have lots of leafy foods. Next one, GSS. Got two ambers here. It'll be one arrow down for each amber. ATP is great for this sort of the system. But... ATP is to function. ATP is made in the mitochondria. So the, for that, I want to eat foods that include oily fish, chicken thighs, and those omega-3s. They'll be a good supplement as well if you get a good quality one. But remember, food is always better than supplements. Mitochondria, like I said earlier, they are the batteries of your cells. MUT, that is downregulated, methylated B12. I struggle converting that so I want to take something for that one called adicillin I don't really know how to say that one but that B12 because it helps with the hemp synthesis which is the process of transporting oxygen around your body the more oxygen you have within your muscles and your blood the more energy you're going to feel like you have when you say you got more energy in the day it's because you are more oxygenated when you have less energy you are hypoxic Let's go on to the next cycle. So these are all going through. Now, VDR. I've got two reds, two down regulated on each one. So for that, that is the transfer from tricene to dopamine. I don't have a very good response in this cycle. I find it hard to make dopamine, which makes it hard to make non-adrenaline into adrenaline. For that, I need vitamin D. It needs to be high high levels. If I don't have this, there is a risk of depression because I struggle making serotonin and because of this, this bit here, the VDR, struggle making these bits. So I struggle with serotonin and dopamine. So if I have my vitamin D3, it's going to help with that. And you can see here my COMT and my MAOB, they are very strong. So if I make some dopamine, because these are red, it's really hard to make this bit. And then the COMT and the MAOB take it out quickly. So when I get a good emotion, my genes take it out quick. This means I need to make sure my D3 is optimized with my K2 because my COMT are so efficient compared to my VDR and that will affect my serotonin and my dopamine levels. As well as that, we have the PNMT gene, amber, one down regulated. My lower ability, like I said, to convert adrenaline into non-adrenaline. This kind of lead to be emotionally flat, but it copes very well with stress. If I get stressed, it's not there very long. It goes pretty quickly and it clears out. So you can look at that both ways, if that's a good or a bad thing. I just need to make sure I have enough vitamin Bs in my system. Let's go on to the next one now. The urea, completely clean. That is fine. So that is quite unheard of, but that cycle is completely good. 
So now I'm gonna start adding these sort of things into my diet for supplement reasons, and then I'm gonna supplement for my deficiencies. Now, because of this, what am I taking differently? I've got a new multivit that is a methylated form of a multivit, as well as that I'm taking B12. I'm taking the adenosine B12 and I'm taking the MB12, just because they're the two sort of B12s I struggle with converting. I'm taking that NM and trimethylglycate, TMG, and as well as that, I've got a better form of vitamin D3 K2, Majority of my supplements are from Fawn. I can go through another video with that to go through what I'm doing. But now that is what I've changed diet-wise. I've gone with cleaner proteins, getting rid of the fruit and veg that is non-organic. Lots of eggs. I'm having at least six a day. I have a daily morning shake with all the goodness in, so I'm making sure I'm not falling short. You can take omega freeze or I could take omega freeze and a probiotic, but I also start having raw milk, which is a great probiotic in itself. And then the omega freeze, if I'm making sure I'm having enough animal fats and meats, I will be clean and I won't need to take that as well as having oily fish on a regular basis. Another great one that I'm gonna be eating on a regular basis is liver. I'm gonna have that at least three times a week, I believe. But that is my report. This is what it looks like, going through each one. See how it goes through each one in more detail. And that is what a report looks like. Something like this, it cost me 340 pounds to get the full report of my methylation. I'm never gonna have to do that ever again. Money well spent. Some people are gonna think you are stupid spending that much money. But health is wealth and it is never a bad investment when you invest into yourself. That is today's video. I will see you tomorrow. Oh, if you got this far, make sure you're subscribing. Forgot about that. Support the channel out. Support the boy out. And then we can keep doing these videos every single day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bish, bash, bosh, pow.